gentlemen, good evening. My name is Elizabeth and I'm the director of the British Council. And I'm very pleased to see you on this beautiful evening. I'm very pleased that the British Council is working together with wonderful Yarat in your fine new space. And I'm immensely pleased to welcome back the Yarat to that road and to have the honour of introducing about five years ago, five years ago, in Damascus, before the beginning of the Hard Times there, we made a visit together um, to the occupied territories of Syria, and that visit led Shadan to a plan for a stupendous new work, a festival set in the wreckage of the ruined city left desolate by the invading army. This memory of a free festival, like the country was overcome by events, but the work showed me Shazan's dazzling vision and his capacity for working with film, painting, music, installation, and for curating and organizing collaboration from a great number of practitioners to make far-reaching, multi-dimensional stories that resonate with the imagination. The Shazad, as you will have read, is a writer of Central St. Martins and the Royal College of Art, and indeed as a doctor of the Leeds University. Um, his exhibitions include the Museum of Modern Art in Oxford, Tate Britain, uh, Mono Yes One and Taipei Vienna and his solo exhibitions just in the last year were have been in Paris or London, Paris or London and in China. And he's been a nominee for the Jamil Prize and winner of the Abraj Capital Art Prize. Astonishingly, the work that we're going to see this evening has something of the form of a science fiction movie with the classic science fiction the idea that there may be aliens living amongst us, unsuspected and unknown. The images are dazzling and very strange. The echoes of stories of migration and assimilation are powerful. Amazingly, the film is set in Preston in the north of England in the early part of the country which is truly alien territory for most London artists. But, so speaking personally, as a once and future collaborator, speaking as a northerner, and speaking as an alien in Azerbaijan, I welcome you. And speaking officially, on behalf of the British Council, and for Yarat, and for all of us here, I thank you for joining us this evening bringing piercing brightness back to you this bright evening. Thank you, Shadan. Thank you very much. Um, it's very nice to see so many people here. I'm very flattered to, to have you all with me tonight. Uh, I'm going to step onto the stage.
is a very intense period of research and investigation. Um, interestingly, for somebody who works in film, I'm also a painter, and I often uh, do what I call a kind of intuitive research through painting. So this is actually uh, a large painting called Inside the Spaceships, which was done as part of my research towards the film you'll see tonight. Uh, Inside the Spaceships is actually named after one of the most famous books uh, in UFO mythology, which was written by a man named George Adamski, who claimed to have been in spaceships uh, with people from Venus. What has always struck me as interesting in the mythologies of both UFOs and of modern art is a very similar formal geometry. And we see from the painting the different discs move white and yellow, which are for me representative not just of UFOs, but it's also a nod to some of my uh, lineage in painting. Uh, I'm often thinking about how my more general research connects to my more personal biography. On the right of the painting, the shadow, the black area, is actually a banana plant uh, from the garden of my grandmother in the garage. This one was almost, uh, this painting is almost the key for my research for this film, because often what I'm doing is looking for things that connect unexpectedly to other, other things. So, this painting was inspired by uh, a diagram drawn by a witness to a UFO at one of the locations that we use in the film. And so this is his view from underneath, looking up at the underside of the UFO. I spent some days with this drawing, thinking I'd seen it somewhere before. And I have quite an extensive library in my studio, and I suddenly pulled out the right book. And I realized that there was almost a perfect parallel with a cosmological diagram drawn by the Sufi mystic Ibn Arabi. And I, I was so shocked, uh, I, I, in Photoshop I put the two images on top of each other and they were almost an identical match. Uh, the very next day I called up a friend of mine who's an art historian to sort of share this this epiphany with someone else. And he said, actually, have you looked at Chinese astronomical maps from the third and fourth centuries? And so I very quickly went to the British Library the following day and, um, and looked at the third and fourth century Chinese astronomical maps, and I found, yet again, an almost perfect match. So for me, it's not that I want to do away with particular nationalities, languages, ethnicities, but I'm very interested in when you scratch beneath the surface, perhaps behind all these different structures of meaning, there are uncanny parallels that suggest a common structure to human myth, uh, to the way we construct even language, phonetics, and, and that all these systems perhaps reflect in a kind of dark mirror one overarching or underlying system. And I just wanted um, the film, I, you know, I made films in a way that combines what I think of as figuration and abstraction. So I wanted to just give people a couple of clues. Um, I often, you know, you will find through the narrative that suddenly there's an image, like a metaphor, that is unexpected. And I do that a lot, both in terms of how the mind can work in moving between the narrative and the non-narrative aspects of our brain. But often there's quite a bit of research behind each image, so I just wanted to share this as one of my favorites. Uh, you will see this image of a deer in the film. And this is a species of deer called Munchak deer. So it was a water give the translator a chance to catch up. Um, Munchak deer are the most common species of deer in the United Kingdom. But interestingly, they didn't exist in the United Kingdom until the 18th century, when the Duke of Bedford imported them from Southeast Asia to decorate his estate. 
And I think for me that might be a wider clue to a lot of the issues within the film, uh, of which I won't say more at this point, but please feel free to ask me at the end. To give a more direct example of how the painting uh, weaves into the films, you will probably see this painted image as a filmed image within the film. And there's a sequence in the film which talks about the placing of the markers which uh, allow for the arrival of what we don't know. I'll, I'll leave that to come. But I, I spend a lot of time thinking about what these markers might be and the geometry they might contain. And I tried it out in a painting before I, I, I included it in the film. And the four markers ended up being four stones that I collected on a beach in Norway. And those beaches are ancient Viking burial grounds. So I like to create different sets of meanings, histories, narratives across, uh, across my films. I have also painted it in red, green, and blue, thinking of how, I have some idea of how there would be an alien communication by, through technology. I often think um, that technology is less separate from us than we think, that in a, in a strange way we evolve through technology. So this painting ended up going in two directions in the film. The markers will fill this kind of diamond geometry, and the red, green, and blue of a typical computer screen becomes the medium through which the kind of queen alien communicates with the Earth. One more image from the film is a toucan. And you'll see a lot of images of exotic birds in the film. And I really thought of uh, migrating exotic birds as a way to think about ideas of migration and assimilation within a host culture. So you'll often see um, particular exotic birds paired with each of the main characters as a kind of structure within the film. And then you'll, you have these more rough hybrid creatures who are made cross between aliens and humans who are actually paired with pigeons who become the more uh, domestic kind of uh, vermin bird that no one takes any notice of. This is an image of Joe from last year in China. Uh, on the back wall, you can see one of my neon wall pieces with a similar idea of geometry as in the first painting. And on the left is a three-screen uh, video work which was inspired by one of the characters in the film. Uh, I often think about uh, this idea of when you die, your whole life flashes before your eyes. And one of the characters in the film reveals that he's been on Earth for hundreds of years, living in different bodies as a man and as a woman. And I thought, what would this being see? Maybe not just one screen, but three screens. And it seems to be the perfect reason for having a three screen installation. Uh, and it's a, it's a very abstract piece going through various lives and time periods, and a mixture of my own archive of material that I've not previously used in my films with other archives that I borrowed from. Just a further idea of how I compose space. Uh, this is an installation work with five penny textile paintings. Just to give an idea of how I move between painting and cinema, for me it's, it's a way to think about juxtaposition of different images and how they are edited in space so you can actually walk around this in between it and make your own associations or chain of associations between the images. Towards the possible film, because 
so often when I'm finishing a film, there's a certain heartbreak when I have to choose which material stays in and which goes out. And I often think of all the possible films. You know, each film I make, there's ten possible films that end up in the trash. And in a way, this was an interesting way to... It, um, I hope you all get to see it someday. But it was an interesting way to think about past and future and possibility. And it very much deconstructs uh, the whole notion of editing and composing a film. Um, that's enough for me. Uh, I hope you enjoy the film. And please uh, do say many questions for me at the end. Thank you very much.
Cigarettes, please.
Це проводу і без мого зносу. Would your body squash it like a banana? Have you got the amount from the dead? You must not work as prostitutes or some knock-off DVDs if you be a dead. You want to be alive. Hmm? Do you want to buy the DVDs?
fresh towels in the bathroom.
большое спасибо. Если есть вопросы, готовы. Şüren ki, 
Yasin Saadet sorumdan çok uzun bir cevap oldu. автор художник и музыкальный альбом ты тоже очень интересный, наверное, несет свои деликматизы, свои деликматизы. Не совсем этот фильм мысль, что все чистое, непорочное, попадает в этот мир, становится темным, становится пачкается и уже не может побывать в гармонии. From the first pictures of this film, there's a feeling that the author is a painter, is an artist, and also it is really excellent selection of the music, which serves with the addition of motivations to this film. But from looking, watching your film, it comes that everything what is a claim, what is a really kind of unsigned. Once it comes to the earth, comes it down. Been polluted and it's already and not come to its original clean. And this is the main uh, sort of your life and transmit from this feeling. I, I think I never really have one message that's usually many messages, and I hope that also in a way the audience can find themselves between those messages. Мне кажется, что в этом фильме я преследую на одном посте. У меня несколько детей заложено в этом фильме. И одна из мыслей, которую вы точно определили, именно касается этого. То есть это все в совокупности на нас смотрите. So, I'm thinking of uh, ecology, mysticism, poetry. But for me, I think one of the problems in the world is that we see these things as separate. Yeah, as much as it's a purpose of comics, in the problem of psychology, poetry, mysticism, no matter is problem of solution, I mean, for sure, all these problems are solved in a single together. Kişinin arasında olan diyalıkları, bu diyalıkları, 
final zamanı ərsiyyət çox gözəl bir varlıqlar ortaya çıxır. İndi növbədə ki, asıl deyil, biz kişi və qadın, asıl etnik nümayəndə nasıl olmayar, bu bütün ayrı seçkiləri bizim bir ayrı, bir cəmiyyət olduğu fikirlə uzaqlaşıq, nəmalaşdırır. Ancaq eyni zamanda düşünmək kimi vaxtı gəlib çatır ki, biz bir cəmiyyətin nümayəndələri Hello, we saw star on the wall and in the museum t-shirt. What is me? We we saw star on the wall and in the museum t-shirt. What is me? Man on the wall. Yəni, divarda o altı kuşaq sürdü, bir də müzikçinin üzərində məlumun əndə olur. Divarda o altı sürdü, bir də müzikçinin koftası üzərində məlumun əndə olur. I was thinking of 
I mean, often I work in a very unusual and many more responsive way. I was thinking loosely of uh, science fiction as a very interesting genre uh, because some of my favorite science fiction authors, it's always a critique of the present, it's nothing to do with the future. E 
eyni zamanda Pesna şəhərdən başlayarak mən dünyada yeni reyalarının yaradılmasına işaret oldum. Yəni artıq istəyir-istəyir bizim hamımıza qərdiş edən, öyrəndişən öyrəşdirilmiş o reyalı kəranışı yeni bir reyalı qeydə olunur və demək olar ki bu artıq bu misafir anlayışları ki
even at the moment when the young Chinese Indian couple are arguing about whether to go outside or not, are they already being influenced by the emotions of our planet? We have to learn to move kind of system as well. Although we have to go get to the system, China. Hariç bir sistemi görülen burada. Hatta görürsünüz ki yani e, görülen bu ses e, yani gelir ve bu sesler hansısa yani yer küresinden hariç olan hansısa diğer bir e, artık e, özünü beğen edilen oturmuş kardalara uygun e, yani insanlara da şeriyette hansısa bir komandalar e, verir. Ve ümumiyyətlə də çıxır orada da yəni e, nəzərdən keçirdiniz ki, orada canlı bir e, çaman e, Çin çöktüğü var ki və onlar da yəni fikirləşir ki, ki, hansı ki, yəni hala keçirilmə getməsinlər. Bu da yəni ümumiyyətlə o vəbalıqdan qidalanır ki, yəni gev kürəsindən kənar xaricdə e, bizə kimsə müşahidə edir, bizə kimsə nəzərə edir, izləyir bizim tam bütün hərəkətlərimiz. Aa, bir də Alalı olan veya yeni bir film çekmek istedikler daha senarisi paralel dünya hakkında olan veya ne bilirsin? Well, actually, uh, what do you think that when you say that the, uh, something, you know, the universal uh, system, do you think that it could be uh, also uh, something, you know, in parallel world? Uh, what is existing in parallel world? There's, uh, I don't know if you remember it because it's quite short, but there's one very short sequence with two planets uh, rotating in slightly different ways but looking almost identical. So for me, this it's putting many thoughts like that out there. Siz eğer şahit ettiğiniz filmden kısa bir epizodda meydana geldi, o da gördüğünüz gibi iki planet paralel olarak falan, yani diğer başka semtler falan da paralel olarak falan da, yani en okşar struktura maliyet iki planet falan da ve bunun da arkasında çok bu fikirler durur. Çok sağ olun.